Oh no, come on, I jumped. What the f oh, No, damn it. Come on. No. Oh, come on, this f***ing thing cheats. What a piece of crap. Come on. What a piece. That's right. I am the master. What? No. No. I hit the button. See this? This is a button. I f***ing hit it. Remember those days of nerd raging at your TV, screaming at your brother or sister or friend next to you and slamming your controller on the ground? I do. That was a lot of fun. Hey, I'm Peter from Infinity Digital, and today I'm going to talk to you about emulators and building your own emulator machine. This is a project I've been thinking about for a long time, and I've wanted to do it for years, and never really got around to building a dedicated emulator machine. I've played emulators on my computer and on my phone and all kinds of other things, but I always really wanted a system completely dedicated to emulation that I could just turn on and play whenever I get the chance. Unfortunately, it's not as often as I like it to be. Lucky for me, my friends at Canakit sent me a little kit to put together with a Raspberry Pi system. So, with a kit like this, you get just about everything you need to make your own little retro gaming system. You get the Raspberry Pi itself, a little case, a power adapter, and an SD card. Oh wait, oh, that's the wrong Raspberry Pi. There we go, the Raspberry Pi. So exactly what is the Raspberry Pi? Besides delicious, Well, the Raspberry Pi, in this case the Raspberry Pi 3 version B, is a microcomputer board about the size of a credit card that has an onboard processor, video processor, HDMI, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, Ethernet, and four USB ports, and a micro SD card slot which it uses for its hard drive. It's a Linux-based board, and people have used it for all kinds of cool and crazy projects, and they're actually relatively cheap and powerful enough to use in a lot of different situations. In this one in particular, though, we're just going to be talking about retro gaming. You can buy a little kit like this on Amazon. Pretty reasonably priced and you get just about everything you really need. So I'm kind of a geek myself. I like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and Star Trek and I love tech obviously and drones and computers and all kinds of nerdy stuff like that. But I'm not a rocket scientist either. So how difficult really is something like this for a person that doesn't have a degree in computer science? Well, surprisingly enough, it's pretty darn easy. And I'm going to show you guys that right now. There's a handful of videos out there that go into depth and step by step on how to set up your very own Raspberry Pi retro gaming system. and. The one I followed in particular was very easy and straightforward to follow and talks you through the whole process and you can check it out here. What I'm going to show you guys is just how quick and easy it really is for the average Joe Blow. So with a kit like this, all you really need to do is take the case Orient the board, snap it all together, and 
in that part is all ready to go in a box about the size of a pack of cards. But we're not ready just yet. Next, you're going to need your micro SD card, and I recommend a 32 gig or perhaps even a 64 gig, depending on how many games you plan on putting on there. So you're going to need to take the card and put it inside of a little card reader like this and put it into your computer. Next, you'll have to format your card using a formatter. Make sure you select the proper drive and give it a name like RetroPie and go for it. Next, head over to the RetroPie website and download the proper image for the board that you're using. Next, use a program like 7Z Opener to unzip the GMU file and extract the IMG file. Once extracted, you'll need to write the image to your SD card. Make sure you choose the proper drive number and the proper file and hit write. Once you're finished with that, you're ready to take your card, pop it into your system, and then the fun begins. So you take your little computer, pop the SD card in, Plug in your HDMI, and plug in your micro USB power, and you're ready to rock and roll. Your system will boot up. and you're off to the races. If you're using the Pi 3, or you have one of the older ones that has a Wi-Fi dongle on it, adding your ROMs is actually going to be super easy. Pi is all set up and ready to go and connected to your Wi-Fi. All you really need to do then is open your file explorer, find it under your network, open the ROMs folder and you see all the different folders for all the different systems and uh, let's go for SNES and then here is just where you would load all of your SNES ROMs as you can see I already have a handful here once you're done all you need to do is reboot your Pi so once you've done that and you're ready to play some games you need a controller the easiest way to go is a USB controller. You can use an Xbox controller, PlayStation controller. I just happen to have a Wii U Pro controller sitting around that uses Bluetooth. And this works extremely well too. All you need to do is set it up. So you would go to Bluetooth. and you would put connect and register to a Bluetooth device. It will search for all Bluetooth devices in range, make sure that you have whatever controller you're using set to its setup mode, and I'm already set up here. Once you've done that, you can go down here and double check and as you can see I'm all set up and ready to rock and roll. Once your controller is ready you have some ROMs all you need to do fire one up sit back and let the good times roll. What? What the f You f Yes!
my ass! 